Okay. Hey, everybody. My name is Edward Zipko. I'm the director and co-founder of Super Chief Gallery and Super Chief Gallery NFT. And I think to start, I'm just going to explain like what Super Chief Gallery is and who we are and all that. And then we'll kind of dive into the culture at large and kind of what the opportunity is of this moment. So uh, let's see. Super Chief Gallery started about 10 years ago. We've been active in New York, Los Angeles, and Miami. We have large warehouse scale, uh, immersive art spaces, art events, and we work with like local underground artists and develop their careers until really lately they've been taking over museums and having kind of really exciting moments. So that's really something we're very proud of. Um, in 2016, we started showing digital native artwork in Soho. In 2021, we opened the world's first NFT gallery in Manhattan. We beat Shanghai by one day to be the first one on the planet. And it kind of changed the, well, it changed my life and it changed the lives of a lot of our artists. So uh, from opening, we did the first ever IRL events for OpenSea, the first ever events for Foundation, Maker's Place, the United Nations, uh, CNN. We became kind of a go-to for how to present NFTs and digital culture to a way that kind of not only feels like a gallery, but also what it might feel like to live with this stuff in your home. Um, something that's been part of what we really believe in and kind of what set us apart from you know, others in the industry was we really come from a community standpoint, organically, naturally working with local artists and opening up bridges to international artists to get shows in New York, Los Angeles, and so on. So what we've, what we've been focusing on uh, is really about how to support and elevate culture. Finding the artists that really show that unique perspective and typically don't get access, I think has been really where we've been having a ton of traction. Um, that's Martha Cooper. Martha Cooper is a famous photographer in street art. Uh, I think she's in her 70s now. We onboarded her to Web3 and helped her do her first NFT in 2021's Basel Week at Scope Art Fair. Sorry, I'm also like seeing the TV in front of me. Mm. So, uh, what we really feel like is the moment right now is culture is being recognized as being a valuable part of the human experience. We are watching a audience and community acknowledge that culture is what enriches life and beyond it being a concept that is this abstract, every part of your existence is created by some creator. Some creative person is making the films that you go to, the music that's a soundtrack of your life. These, these things come from the underground. These artists break through and make it into mass culture, but it's been a very, uh, a very difficult process to break through and a very difficult process to survive the structure. So what we've been doing is, starting in 2012, we started doing exhibitions that were really based around barbecues and getting an underground community to galvanize and kind of recognize each other. Doing group exhibitions that would introduce artists to other artists. Creating opportunities that could support these artists going not just to the other side of the country and having exhibitions in LA, but recognizing that they have corollaries and there's a version of their community that's present in these other cities. And I think that unifying that has been a movement that's been taking 10 years to galvanize, but has now reached a point before COVID, we were hitting a ceiling. It was really hard to take a community of artists and scale. We would do exhibitions that 1,500 people would come out, uh, 2,500 people would come out for the opening parties, 
which is wonderful to kind of get everybody together, but how do you bring that international? And how do you make that where an artist's work that are typically paintings or sculpture, how do you scale that into a career? It was a really difficult moment before COVID. COVID exacerbated that moment. And in 2020, we watched Beeple have his kind of $3.5 million weekend. And as a group that was pushing artists that were digital artists in 2016, we built relationships based on showing the work as part of the culture and the discourse with no way to sell it. So we built a lot of really strong relationships with digital artists that led us to doing, uh, we were, 2019, we did our biggest show at Basel with 25,000 square feet of warehouses. We did a giant show. Um, afterwards, we were talking with Beeple about how to do his first, in, uh, first solo exhibitions in New York, Los Angeles, Miami. When COVID happened and knocked that out, um, we were basically in stasis for a year trying to understand how does our gallery exist moving forward. Um, the purpose of, I don't know, purpose of our experience with NFTs has been about getting artists royalties and bringing them into that world of a sustainable existence as an artist. Um, what I think we can focus on now is, what I think we can focus on now is building these bridges internationally, recognizing that artists have a, uh, sorry, one second. Recognizing that artists have an opportunity to build their community internationally. They can get outside of the algorithm, standing in the way of their relationship with their audience, and they can formally start their career without the fear that there will be a continual need for them to deliver content constantly to pay their rent. Having ongoing secondary sales is an essential part of what's being built and the community that's being galvanized at this moment is culture as a large, as a whole. Um, I've lost a little bit of my track. I think at this point, at this point I'm gonna open it up for questions. I think that uh, if people have any thoughts on what is happening right now in the art world, its intersection with NFTs and culture right now, um, I'll open it up. Right there? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's about actually looking. I think part of curation and part of my relationship with the, let me show this is over here. Part of our curation and part of the way that I look at the art world is like for this right now, that's an artist we've worked with for like five years. She did the Every Woman Biennial, which was uh, a project her and her friends created that was in response to the Whitney Biennial, which had very few female artists. So she created the Whitney Houston Biennial, I Am Every Woman, and started bringing together hundreds of women to have outsider art fairs. Um, it would ride uh, concurrently with like the official one, and it was just basically a media stunt to bring light to the fact that there wasn't enough representation of female artists. Uh, because we have a natural and real relationship with her, uh, we were able to be an authentic partner to do the first Every Woman Biennial on the blockchain. So in 2021, we onboarded 200 female artists uh, and female identifying artists and threw an exhibition for them in New York City. So I think like, the way to approach it is to earnestly give a shit 
like want to participate, want to find the artists from those communities that speak to you, finding actual artwork that resonates with you that is coming from these communities, it takes a little bit of work to kind of step outside of your space and what you would typically be like looking at because you're fed your own mirror online, right. you know? So I think it's, it takes steps. Physical locations are essential. I, I think like, so we've had like the New York, LA, Miami ones for like years and years, right? Each one, we've had different locations. You know, in New York, I think we're coming up on our 10th lease. You know, like we throw big parties. Sometimes neighbors don't like it. Sometimes neighborhoods don't like it. Sometimes neighborhoods really love it and it's awesome. Um, but everybody's different. And we've been in, I think like six different neighborhoods in New York, like over the last decade. So I think it's physical locations are really huge because they allow the community to gather and to actually show up and meet each other. Because as a concept, it's all good and fine. But like if there's a piece of tech that's between you and other people, like an algorithm or how often you check the tech, I think going somewhere in person is where you can build a real connection. And then mirror the online one, build it out. Yeah. Any other questions? It's a lot more fun answering questions. Yeah. Ah, it's all good. Certainly. Totally. And I mean, I think like, oh, there's so much to it. I feel like if there was royalties in real life art, that would be a, an amazing place to start. But I feel like it's going to have to be tested and proven in NFTs and then be crawled back into like traditional physical works. But the result is the same. We want artists to have a sustainable income. And if other people are benefiting off of the investment into the work, why is the artist not in, you know, benefiting as well long term? We have royalties in music, we have royalties in film, we have royalties in almost every other creative medium. So why would we not have that in visual arts? I think it's just a, it's a sea change moment. Yeah. Um, also scalability, you know, like it's really frustrating doing an art show with an artist and they have 12 paintings and we love those paintings and we know that they spent a year making them and it's like fucking a lot, you know, but how do you do that for, oh, this is our LA location, by the way. That was a fun show. Um, how do you do that for a thousand fans? Could a thousand people ever own this person's work? Does that limit, like, does that part of their artistic career limit how many uh, collectors, I guess, financial support they have, you know? So it's, it's a totally different scaling opportunity, I think. Also really exciting is the fact that it's the tech. This is kind of the first meaningful interaction between art and tech in a way that's sticking. It's always been a bit of a corporate relationship where they're supporting creativity using that tech, but then it's over. This is kind of like an onboarding process for like, you know, this is like thousand year art. The purpose of this is how do you permanently create a piece of oh yeah, that's our LA gallery. This is the, uh, the sculpture, it's like a slide of a sculpture by an artist named Doyle, and it's sold at Sotheby's, that's fun. It's a, uh, it's a Burning Man car that we drive around with flamethrowers on. Um, you know, the culture is the, I've done Yeah, that years, looked awesome. You know, like, whoop, whoop. Play, Into, which does abstract expressionist work. The creative world's been normalized for me in a, a very you know, significant way. So like making sure that it's handled properly by this new moment is like, that's kind of the purpose of my life right now. 
because the opportunity is to create a legitimate connection to culture. And I think if culture is, as a concept, the best of us, if culture is like how we define our, you know, a city's culture, the culture of an industry, the culture that, you know, uh, of a generation, like those are how we, how we talk about uh, the best of a period of time or the best of a place and how we kind of share who we are from that. So it's an incredible moment and opportunity and I think that I'm excited to see how it rolls out and trying to do my best to support it. So that's my time. Uh, thank you everybody, appreciate it.